This car is probably too rough for Ed Bolian. One of the hardest things for me to do in the car business is transact Corvettes. In the Porsche world, and especially the Ferrari world, people are willing to pay a premium for condition and uh, for good documentation. They will pay more for a nine and a half out of 10 car than they will an eight out of 10 car. There's always the bottom feeders, but since Ed Bolian is not my target demographic of buyer, then I'm uh, looking for the people who are willing to pay more for a better product. Because of that, I've pretty much stopped selling Corvettes. It's just not worth it to me. And I think there's actually an, an article, I haven't read it yet, but somebody said that the C5 Corvette was the one that essentially like ruined the Corvette market because they had made it so accessible that any margins on the used market and on the new just disappeared. And the Nissan GTR was like that actually as well. I made a lot of money flipping them originally when there was a arbitrary amount over MSRP that you could ask. But then once they went on the used market, it was like wholesale was 68 and retail was 69. That's just not worth it to me. So Corvettes tend to be the same way. Every time I get in a Corvette, I'll pay up for it because I'm like, man, this is the cleanest one I've ever seen. Great maintenance history, maybe some nice upgrades. And then it just sits and sits and sits. And buyers are just like, oh, I can buy this one on eBay for $800 less. I found this one for $200 less. I'm like, it has twice the mileage or, you know, any rationale that I would use on any other car that just doesn't seem to phase Corvette buyers. So I figured this was a problem limited only to the people on the buying side. Well, recently I was hired by a local exotic car rental company in Cleveland called Dream Car Adventures to uh, assemble a fleet of cars for them. And in this was a Corvette C7, either a, a Stingray or a Z06. I thought this was a walk in the park. I had already sourced them a Ferrari California, Lamborghini LP560 Gallardo, and a Bentley GTC, and had done very well for them. Found some uh, pretty clean cars that weren't perfect, but were very nice. And I thought a Corvette, man, this will be easy. All the buyers are cheap, so I'll be able to get a good buy on the other end. Turns out the sellers are just as annoying to deal with as the buyers. I have to hand it to Corvette Mike to buy a vet to all these places that exclusively do vets. They must have figured out how to deal with these people. I can't do it. This is a gross stereotype here, but you know, it must be the, the fiberglass fumes or something that make this cross section of, of buyers and sellers more difficult to deal with. And it's maybe why I haven't joined the Corvette club yet. So mine isn't for sale for any rational amount of money but mine also isn't actively for sale. It seems like the people trying to sell their cars also aren't willing to sell it for any rational amount of money. Now, in, in trying to find this car, I joined the Corvette Buy Sell Trade Group on Facebook thinking, man, this'll, this'll really help out. So within this Facebook group, you know, all the sellers were asking way too much and all the comments were basically just vitriolic saying, oh, you're out of your mind. But the interesting thing was, is every Corvette owner had a one of one car because it was, you know, one of this color with this particular options built on this Monday at the factory. And, you know, so, so every Corvette was rare, even though they've made millions of them. And it made me think of the regular car reviews video, which is probably one of the best ones ever and sums up the Corvette owner stereotype where he goes to, I think, Carlisle and just goes around going, my Corvette is best Corvette because I have an airbrushing on the hood. My Corvette is best Corvette because I have a matching trailer. So that seemed to be what I was encountering. Nobody wanted to negotiate on their prices. Nobody was open to realistic offers. And this searching for a Corvette, which I thought would be the easiest thing in the world, turned out to be one of the hardest assignments I had ever had. You know, the auction pricing was darn near what retail was. So I wasn't able to pull any margin either. So I'm like, I'm having to work the hardest ever for the least possible return. And I'm thinking, man, these dealers must just 
make it all up on the back end. You know, they're stocking their lots with Corvettes and just saying, all right, well, we'll charge financing to everybody. And I, I actually did experience that. I found one that was priced essentially at wholesale value. So I looked up the feedback from the dealer. They had a pretty sketchy reputation and a lot of complaints for not being willing to sell the car for the advertised price. So I figured I'd try that theory out. So I called them up and tried to buy the car for the advertised price, and I couldn't. First of all, they said that it didn't include a $2,000 down payment, which I said, well, that wasn't in your description. So I said, listen, I'm a dealer. I would like to wire you the money and come get the car. No, 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 we can't sell it to anybody out of state. I said, why not? Well, you have to come take delivery of the car. We don't ship cars. I'm like, that's fine. I'll fly in there tomorrow. And they just kept finding excuses as to why they wouldn't sell me the car at their advertised price. And a couple days later, the price on the internet changed, not surprisingly. I was really baffled as to why these prices were so high from the private owners anyway. I figured that all of their friends are so sick of hearing about how special their cars are that uh, they put it out there so people will call and insult them for their asking price just so they can have another opportunity to explain just how special and unique their one-of-one -one Corvette is. Now I say that, but I may be the pot calling the kettle black because my Corvette is a 98 convertible in light carmine red and it's the only year they made that color in the convertible and please don't call it anniversary red because it's lighter than that and has more copper flake in it. And they only made like 300 in that color. And I have the tan interior and it's a manual. So yeah, if I ever sell mine, I'm gonna be that idiot too. But anyway, let's get down to the Corvette I finally found. So I found a Corvette Stingray that had a bunch of Z06 stuff on it. So it looked like a Z06 and it had higher mileage, it had a bad Carfax, but not a terrible Carfax. So it had a, a couple minor damage reports, so um, still a little too clean for Ed. I'm like, man, this, this looks good. It was like 34 grand. It was on the low end of the scale. So I'm like, all right, I think this is actually perfect for a rental company, because it's not perfect cosmetically. We're not paying the premium for Z06, but it looks like a Z06, so it's great marketing for them. So I got the okay from the uh, the rental car company and proceeded to try to buy it. And of course I did my due diligence. I checked out the seller. There were a very reputable Corvette auction facility, we'll say, somewhere south of Ohio and well known in the Corvette community. So I said, okay, well, this, this seems like a good bet. My buyer was actually told that the car was very nice, just a few minor cosmetic imperfections and he said, you will be blown away by this car. Well, he was right. The car showed up while I was on vacation. And uh, I asked my detailer, I said, hey, um, how's it look? He said, well, to be honest, it's, it's pretty rough. Okay, well, how bad is it? And so he started describing how bad it was. And he did not exaggerate. It had poor prior paint work. It had sagging and lifting upper dash panel. It had excessive seat wear. It had body panels that didn't fit properly. It had cracks in the fiberglass in the rear fender and the door. Uh, it was missing clips in the front bumper, so that was loose. The Z06 wheels, which they had put on, they did not properly put uh, fender extensions on so they stuck out about this far from the body. The Z07 rear spoiler had been mounted with drywall screws and not mounted well. There was actually extra holes and on one side it wasn't mounted at all. So apparently somebody had given up on trying to finish the job. So I said you, you need to send me pictures of all this stuff because that's that's more than a little rough. That's uh, That's a big problem. So I called and texted the owner of this Corvette uh, facility. I said, we got a problem. This car is nowhere near as described. This car is probably too rough 
for Ed Bolian. He proceeded to defend the car and say, no, 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 that's normal wear for 60,000 miles. I'm like, listen, this is not normal wear for 60,000 mile Corvette. I've had a couple Corvettes at 60,000 miles and they were perfect. I mean, I could expect maybe a, a glove box full of lottery tickets or, you know, if, if the matching Corvette jacket that came with it was a little bit ripped and smelled like smoke, you know, I, I could live with that. Th those are normal uh, Corvette wear things. Or, you know, if it had too many um, Corvette Club meetup stickers on the back window or, you know, if, if the CB mount was, was bent or something like that. But th this was completely unacceptable, even for a rental car. So I said, there's money coming back. You're either taking this car back or there's a significant amount of money coming back to me. And he goes, well, I, I don't want the car back. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> no kidding. So he goes, well, how much money would you want? And I said, ah, I think I want $2,500. He goes, oh, that's a lot. I go, well, that's going to take that to make it right. Plus, it's going to be a lot of hassle. So he said, well, how about two grand? I said, nah, I don't think that's going to do it. But let me, let me think about what I want to do here and I'll call you back. So I hung up with him and then I, uh, Matt, while he's detailing it, is finding more flaws and he keeps texting me more photos. And I'm like, oh man, this is, this is not good. So I was actually elated that he had not taken my $2,500 offer because if he had, I would have to stand by that. And I was more elated that I didn't take his counter offer. Um, so thankfully I had no obligation to take any amount of money from him at this point because my wife who's a wonderful sounding board and puts up with all my stories from, from work, but is, uh, great at advising me. She just looked at me and said, do you really want to deal with all of that? I mean, you got enough on your plate. And I was like, you know what? No, I don't like, even if he gave me 10 grand, I don't think I want to deal with the hassle of trying to get all this stuff fixed and cleaned up and get the car right, uh, for the client. So I called him back and said, wire me the money back. This, there's, there's not a question about this. You're going to take the car back. You know what you did. You can spin it however you want. You can give me all the car salesman lines. I'm not an idiot. Like this car must go back. And surprisingly, he said, okay. And by 2 p.m. that day, the money was back in my account. And I have to hand it to him because I've dealt with a lot of shady people before and uh, most of them are not actually going to admit they're wrong and send you the money back. So I, I think what happened is the car probably didn't sell at his annual Corvette auction and for good reason and he knew exactly what he was representing or misrepresenting and he was just hoping to find a sucker that didn't really... Uh, have good eyes or <laughs> forgot his bifocals when he took delivery of the car and I was the wrong guy to buy it. And so he took it back and he'll pawn it off on another sucker, I guess. I have to hand it to him that he, he sent the money back and all that meant was now I have to restart the search for another Corvette. So actually in my desperation and my lack of success on all of the wholesale sites, all of the retail sites, all my normal avenues, I put a want to buy ad out on Instagram. Basically a plea for help. I need a Corvette that I can buy from somebody who isn't the stereotypical Corvette guy that thinks their car's worth the moon. Thankfully, I found one. Somebody tagged their friend in it and he was looking to sell his Corvette and it was a Z06 with a Z07 package and it had a few miles on it and a few minor upgrades. It seemed to be the perfect car and he wasn't asking too much money. We ended up sealing a deal and what actually helped the deal out was that both CarMax and uh, I think Criswell Chevrolet had offered him like seven grand less than I ended up buying the car from him for. Which kind of confused me because I said, man, this is these Corvette guys, they all want top money for their car. Yet Criswell is the probably the largest retailer of Corvettes in the country. And they just lowballed the crap out of him, like five grand below wholesale. You know, I don't know if it's just that the guys need the money for their, their bingo night or something like that, but apparently they must take these offers. And, and that's how other dealers make money on Corvettes is just buying them for far less than they're worth so that they can then advertise them for uh, what uh, the average Corvette buyer is willing to pay. So them offering 
whopping $53,000, which was less than wholesale for a non-Z07 Z06 Corvette, allowed me to swoop in and buy it for a pretty good deal at $60,000. And the seller was very happy. The rental company was happy. And uh, it's already been booked a couple times. And uh, actually, somebody's rented it out for a cross-country trip. So I don't know if that's for just a leisure trip with his favorite Hooters waitress, or if it's a trip to a big Corvette meet where he can say, my Corvette is best Corvette because my name is not on the title. Or maybe if it's for a cannonball attempt. But I guess only time and the GPS records will tell. This month's car stories are sponsored by The Ridge. The Ridge makes a line of wallets and bags that are designed to be minimalist and help us just take with us the things we actually need. So check out the link in the description below for a discount and buy one for yourself or they make great Christmas presents. And be sure to let them know how thankful you are for their support of VinWiki.